Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We're zooming in and focusing in on a super important topic that comes through kind of your journey. And I think it'll make a lot of sense if you've encountered this on your journey. If you've had relationship issues, connection issues with those people who are controlling. Um, people who are controlling have a strong attachment to an outcome of a situation and have a trouble attaching to other people. So they're more attached to an outcome and sort of a social conditioning of others, which oftentimes includes abusive conditioning of those people who are in their closest inner circle in order to suppress, repress, and avoid their feelings and insecurities of abandonment. Oh, but this person, peace and harmony, is my mother. This person is my spouse. They are in a marriage. They have employment. They have a mortgage. How can they be so controlling? How can they be so insecure? How can they be fearful of abandonment when it seems like they're pushing people away with their overt and covert tendencies to try to control and dictate how everything and everyone is going to go and behave? Well, a person who is controlling is attached to an outcome. So you might feel detached from them or have trouble relating to them or connecting. People who are narcissistic or psychopathic, people who have these personality deficiencies, uh, abnormalities, idiosyncrasies, whatever you want to call it in their human form, it is what it is. Whether you want to label all day, judge all day, struggle all day, that is up to you. But what I want to help you to understand in this video is the concept of people who are controlling the cause that creates this tendency and then its effect on you, particularly when it becomes negative, when it becomes li limiting, when it becomes restrictive, when it causes you to be separate from your divine nature, when it causes you to disconnect from that which is your intuition, your guidance, your divine infinite intelligence that's running through you and clamoring to get your attention, but yet you have to become so severed and disconnected from your truth within because of the abusive conditioning that these people tend to throw as a net onto those people, especially those people who are closest to them, their family members, their immediate family members, their immediate colleagues, if it's in your work environment, those people who are super controlling. In other words, you feel that you can't really do the do, you can't really be yourself, you can't really be authentic, because for some reason, this becomes a threat towards the person who is controlling, because if you try to be yourself, and you might be happy for no reason in particular, but yet they want to draw you into their drama and fulfill their needs to control other people. So sometimes people who are controlling can be leaders. They can be managers. They can be supervisors. They can be, you know, great uh, rule makers. They can be lawmakers. They want to control an outcome. But when this becomes out of balance or, you know, and then not in your best interest, it becomes very difficult because there's a, a tendency to need to conform and give them reassurance through abiding by their, by their discretion, by what they think is right and appropriate. It doesn't mean what is right or appropriate for you. It's what they say. So it tends to drown out other people's 
self-esteem. It tends to drown out their authenticity. It tends to drown out other people's personality. This becomes like overwhelming. Just like the way if you put in too much garlic in a dish, you can say this dish is overwhelmed with garlic. All you taste is garlic. So that means there's too much of this ingredient in the dish. It's not balanced out. The flavors don't, you know, work harmoniously and complement each other. And you say, wow, this is a magnificent gourmet dish. This is incredible. You know, your people might say, oh my God, this is too heavy on the garlic. So it's kind of like an analogy towards really what it feels like to be in a relationship with someone who is either overtly controlling, i.e. the taskmaster, or controlling through covert means, which means not readily perceptive, but people who are passive aggressive and controlling through snide comments, dirty looks, the silent treatment, the ignoring behavior, the, you know, oh, well, you know, the, the sort of comments well, you know, I guess, you know, you're, you're just not going to get to attend the event because you're working when you have a commitment, you have a new job and they're making you feel bad because you have to attend to what is important to you. Um, they, you know, might say things like, oh, you know, you're going out in the sun. Well, I guess you don't care about getting sun cancer. Um, you know, just, uh, always controlling the outcome. Um, Oh, you know, you, you can't cut a carrot the right way. Look how much you're wasting. You know, you, um, you know, there's too much, you know, your the, the, the top piece of the carrot, which you, you couldn't chew if you had, you know, the sharpest of teeth, but yet they're trying to point out that you're doing something incorrectly, controlling the behavior, controlling you when you're perfectly adequate and adept at cutting carrots, you know, peeling the potatoes. You're wasting too much of the potato. You're using a, a potato peeler and you're getting off the skin for your holiday dish. You're trying to make potatoes and all you just leave the event, all you can hear is these controlling false accusations that are overwhelming your memory and your experience is this person, you know, uh, giving you false accusations that, you know, you don't, you're not watching what you're doing, you're wasteful. There's all these sort of blanket comments that are judgmental in nature designed, which then, you know, to, because of their need to be needed, their insecurity, yet they come off as being super secure, i.e. leader, i.e. controlling the situation or giving it structure, which on the, the balanced amount can be great because if people are, you know, empowering or assisting you to bring out your skills, in other words, showing you how to do something and then let you run with it. Here's how you peel potato. You're doing great. Thumbs up. Keep it going. You know, it's, it's then overwhelming then to those people who are in their, their proximity in their closest relationships because all they remember is the fact that you're wasteful. You're wasting the potatoes. What are we going to do? Are we going to run to the store and get some more? All you feel is their unhappiness. And then you feel that they're unhappy with you as a person, as a human being. And people then get conditioned or what I would call abusive conditioning. They're conditioned by the abuse to feel that this abuse is necessary for them to become a good human being. They tend to feel that then they must please this person, i.e. make them happy, and so that if they're happy, then they're a good person. If they're unhappy, I'm a bad person. So then there's a pivot then around the abuser, keeping this keeping them from their rage, narcissistic rage. It's not all about me. What do you mean it has to be about you? What do you mean you did something right? What do you mean you did something independent? What do you mean if you did something on your own? You know, you got 100%. You got a promotion. You got a new friend. 
you've got a new interest, you've got a new hobby that's taking into your life to bloom and blossom, yet here comes you know, them yanking you back, telling you you didn't do a good enough job. And, you know, they're trying to keep you in their net, their net of control. And then, you know, you feel that no matter what you do, the more you fight, the more you struggle, the tighter the net gets. So eventually, you, you know, the more you try to please this person, you're being inauthentic to yourself. There becomes a disconnect. The disconnect within them becomes that internalized in a disconnect within you. It's very difficult to feel that you are in your element, that you are blooming, proliferating, growing, you know, to your freedom, your divine right, free will, and to honor the divine within you, which is built in and, you know, part of your own inter internal wiring, rather than tuning into that and then allowing that divine unfolding and experience of being the best person that you are and having a close relationship with happiness and life and feeling that things are going your way, instead of being able to listen within, there's always this external listening without. In other words, there's something wrong with you is the message of these really controlling individuals. There's something wrong with you. You, you don't know how to uh, vacuum right. Uh, you don't know how to dust correctly. You need to mow the lawn in this pattern. You need to uh, stir it in this manner. You, you know, the, the most, and it becomes almost laughable, the, uh, the, the uh, degree to which these people will go to control especially when it's in your finest moments, when you need independence, you need autonomy, you need freedom. It doesn't mean that you're abandoning them. It doesn't mean that you're leaving them. You are enjoying your life. You know, there's always something as an object of contention with people who have a control issue over others. Once again, people who are up for the challenge, they maybe, you know, they're great teachers, they're great managers, great supervisors, you know, they have developed this and they can help, you know, lead an organization. They can bring out the best of others. They can create balance, you know, in the their, their workplace. They can help you and understand that you're going to make mistakes and that you're going to learn and grow. But if you cannot grow, if you cannot make mistakes, that's the huge dichotomy. You can't become better until you get worse, you know, not worse, but meaning you, you have to be able to have mistakes in order to learn and stay true to yourself and true to your heart and true to your divine nature, who you're put here on this earth to be, where your feet are planted right now. Your feet are designed to beat according to the rhythm of your own heart and that is where the music is. That's where the magic is. But when you're always conditioned by an abuser, what you might call abusive conditioning, there's going to be an insecurity sort of bred into you, which keeps you separated from your autonomy and your freedom. And instead, that, that need for you to grow then becomes distorted perverted, if you will, to being you are radical, you are a rebel, you are, you know, da, 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 you know, all sorts of slew of things. You, <clears throat> you know, um, you know, you're a, a black sheep. You're not listening to me. You know, um, the, the grip, <clears throat> you know, the controller will try to grip on you. Gripping you so hard, you know, they leave nail prints. You know, they might scratch you. They might pull your arm. They might try to get you involved in long, you know, conversations that, you know, you know, it's two hours, three <clears throat> hours or whatever it is that they're trying to, you know, make you attend to and you're having to 
feel a sense of then codependency then develops. And then any sort of then, if you become conditioned and then learn to become sort of enmeshed and ensnared with this person, it becomes very, especially for a period of time, you can have sort of a developmental delay or feeling that you're not on your right path. And then so you, it's very difficult and unpleasant to tune into then what you need to do. You kind of feel like you have a lot of catch up to do. It's like being off of work for a couple of weeks and you're like, OMG, look at all my emails, look at all my voicemails. You know, I miss this meeting and you feel that you're not, you know, you're behind. And then this can be a snowball that just gets bigger. In other words, where you, it feels very unpleasant to discipline yourself, that discipline coming from within. Once again, a good teacher can help, can help you to discipline yourself. So there's not this enmeshment. There's a respect of boundaries. You know, I'm not threatened by your independence. I'm not threatened by your growth. I'm not threatened by your success. I'm not threatened by your freedom. I'm not threatened by your choices. I have trust, you know. Um, it, it's not, you know, that's why in a relationship that we discuss here with someone who is narcissistic or psychopathic, there's really a feeling of, of overwhelm and a feeling of sort of not being heard in the relationship or furthermore, even more intense is a feeling of feeling that, of feeling lost. You know, I feel lost. That's really, that feeling is when you're really sort of dissociated from your own needs, <clears throat> you know. It's almost like an amnesia. You know, you don't, you know, you're not attuned to your own needs. You're attuned to the controlling person's needs. So your needs become foreign. And then to some degree, you know, this can be reinforced, you know, oh, you know, to sacrifice for this, you know, sacrifice for that. Yet it ain't no fun when you're then in a state of perpetual struggling in a state of perpetual confusion <clears throat> in a state of perpetual unknowing or feeling that you don't know who you are or you can't go out and make friends or you're embarrassed <clears throat> to go out and make friends because this per you haven't really sort of, you know, grown and done some things on your own where, you know, it's like riding and learning to ride a bike, you know, you can't have someone balancing it for you and controlling the outcome or where you go. When you ride a bike, you have to get a feel for how it balances out. You know, you might fall off. You might skin your knee. The person who then has a guise, you know, of being overprotective <clears throat> or, you know, it's not really doing you a service if they're overly controlling. <clears throat> so there's a, then a lack of experience of giving your own self feedback, giving your own self feedback instead of feedback from the controller. Oh, you did a good job. Oh, look, you finally cut the carrots, including all the leaves and everybody's going to break a tooth and we're going to have a thousand dollar dentistry bill here, but at least you cut the carrots correctly and at least I am right. <clears throat> so the narcissist, you know, definitely and, you know, they want, they're into them being right, you know, to, cer to a certain degree more than other, you know, the controller wants to control. Once again, it usually harkens back to their own fear of abandonment. Maybe they lost somebody early in their life um, and they're, it then created, you know, they might have, a sibling might have passed early in their life, a parent, an uncle, a teacher, a neighbor, they might have moved a lot, you know, there could be some situation that created the perfect storm and then now you've got this really sort of mean, hostile, aggressive, angry, controlling, what feels like unloving person that then conditions you to the abuse and makes you then it becomes the new normal. Um, this can be very unpleasant. It can be very unpleasant and very difficult to know how to repattern yourself to grow 
and be liberated and be free and feel secure in and of yourself. And that comes from being able to give your own self feedback. Hey, I did a great job cutting the carrots. Hey, I did a great job peeling the potatoes. Hey, I did a great job making the coffee. Hey, I did a great job of stirring, you know, the vegetables. Um, you know, it's, it's very important that you understand the cause that's created this type of person and get to know people and then its effect on you and to realize that there's nothing wrong with you. It's you're, when you're with a controller, it's like the garlic that overwhelms the dish. You know, the controller, um, you know, they, they, <clears throat> They think they're doing it out of love, but I think there's a misperception and, and that, you know, people need to be released and let go and to have their personal space and to have a boundary at that and to realize, you know, they don't own this person. Um, and, you know, especially when it comes to a disconnect within and you can't give yourself the feedback um, for a job well done or be, to be able to feel confident within yourself that you can make you are able to then experience your own self-judgment <clears throat> you know um and and to not define yourself by their insecurity by their transgressions don't define yourself by their judgment begin to release it and let it go and to say that's just this one person's judgment there's more to the story than this this is just this one person's judgment there's more to me than this. This is just this one person's judgment and need to control. There's more to the big picture. There's more to life than this. And that is okay. Even though they might loom certain, you know, super large, they might get in your face. They might raise their voice to maintain their control over you. Um, but it becomes overwhelming. It breeds anxiety, especially when they're away, you know, Oftentimes, the control can be so severe that it is hurtful. <clears throat> whether they intended to hurt, whether they didn't intend to hurt, you know, how do you deal with it? Um, you know, did you intend to hold me back? You know, are you intending to take, you know, monopolize my schedule? You know, you don't want to challenge them and approach them in a specific way that flit causes them to flare up. <clears throat> this is just who they are. So it's to understand what they're doing and then its impact on you. Um, and if you've sort of suffered at the hands of someone who's been controlling, realize it's, it's part of their issue and who they are. And to try to change them is, you know, oftentimes is going to be an exercise of futility. You're only going to feel futile, worthless, a failure, defeated, impossible, um, life, you know, is going to be a struggle and painful for you forevermore. And you want to throw in the towel and think, you know, give up. And then there becomes this real sort of, you know, real sort of sad, melancholy depression. It might even become post-traumatic stress syndrome because it's been so traumatizing, um, that you haven't gotten a chance to spread your own wings, feel your own strength, check in with yourself. So, you know, you need to be able to give your own self feedback and then you'll be able to stop looking only for the approval from this person and stop that people pleasing behavior, but do it to meet your own goals and your own strengths and your own discretion and your own defining of what is right for you and adequate for you and then competency for you and then excelling for you. So it is very, very sad when these experiences are thwarted or you're hindered from experiencing your own brilliance, your own happiness, your own excellence, because you're derailed or distracted by the nagging or controlling of this person. <clears throat> And if this person is, you know, a close family member or a colleague, well, it might, you know, help you to resolve the tension if you appease them 
pacify them, you know, cut the carrot their way, peel the potato their way, make, you know, tie your shoes their way, park the car their way, set the table their way, arrange the flowers their way, you know, cut the grass their way, comb your hair their way, button your shirt their way. I mean, it can become, you know, um, really laughable. I mean, and this can go on to the point where people are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and they're still pleasing their abuser. You know, it just becomes, you need to do a pattern interrupt. It is okay. It becomes almost like a divine law that people navigate their lives by and rule their lives by, you know, by the hands of this abuser. And they never get a chance to experience something bigger, something more mystical, magical, something more sublime, something that is unexplainable, um, something that is what you might call a miracle, you know, something that you might call personal growth or meeting your, you know, um, just amazing opportunities, synchronicities happening in your life, God winking, you know, the those, you know, uh, wonderful relationships that you can have that take you to the next level that are you know giving you that the good life living the dream you know being able to embrace your own success and not feeling selfish because you've accomplished something you've gotten a promotion you've done your homework you read a book you took a class you developed a new skill or you're not you're attending and honoring that inner drum, you know, that, that inner inspiration, you know, what fuels your fire and is like, you know, that, that, that spark in allowing more sparks to, you know, in, uh, inspire you in your life and to go on that inspiration and to have that internal trust that can only be experienced when you release the abuser and and or the controller and knowing that this is just who they are and that it's not your job here it's not your purpose in this life to to suffer at the hands of someone who's overly controlling even though it seems that way even the controller would love to have you believe that the truth is if you love something you must set it free you know and you must set it free and you must be able to extend that freedom. You know, maybe you're moving, maybe you're taking a job, you know, somewhere, maybe you want to travel, maybe you need a sabbatical, maybe you need to take a year off, a week off, a day off, you know, even if you're married or in a job, you know, you need to take a mental health day, a personal day. Um, and so, you know, the reassurance that these people need, it can become laughable to the point where you can't do it anymore. So that's known as rock bottom. So realize you're, you're not hurting life by not being abused. You're not hurting life by being happy. You're not hurting life by being passion, having your passion. You're not hurting life by being inspired. You're not hurting life by being your best self, even though the abuser, you know, might, you know, shriek at your commitment to your independence and your freedom, you can't be dismayed by their disappointment, their, you know, their looks. You you can't melt at at their needs to control. I think it really helps to understand the cause that's created this effect, and perhaps even deeper. The cause has created this personality snafu or situation or type or what have you. We don't want to judge because to judge is going to only cause more rifts and more trouble. So to not judge, can't judge, it is what it is. They are who they are. It's not your purpose. It's not your job to bend to their will. It's your job to honor the divine will within you, which is leading you to your best version, to your greatness, to the bigger picture, to becoming aligned 
and acknowledging and honoring the divine where you can check in with yourself and trust yourself, you know, and, but it, it's that, it's that distrust really that the controlling person has over their own life, which causes them to overreach, overextend, over control because they, they need their neediness. It's who they are, but you have to be able to, you know, release them and let them go in love and light and let them be who they are. And to say, you know, it's, it's bigger than me. Their, their happiness is bigger than me. In other words, it's, it's gotta be their job. You know, they're going to have to work that out in their own life. And I'm going to give it to the divine intelligence who's also created them. I'm going to allow divine intelligence to take care of them and to guide them in their way. And I'm going to release myself from the responsibility of having to be an object of their control and be a victim. And when you do that and you just draw the line and to say no to my own self, I need to be true to my own self. I am true. And for that, that means in them being able to spell it out, being able to know what that is for you. I need to be able to cut the carrots. I need to be able to know how to peel potatoes, set, you know, set, set a table, go on a date, have a job, know my own sleep schedule, know my own healthy diet, get my spending under control, being able to participate in relationships, being able to have a conversation without being feeling like I'm not good enough. So realize the cause that's created this effect and being able to release them in love and light and being able to check in with your own self and honor your needs and then to hold your head up. And every time you know you feel that hurt or pain, realize that it's part of that relationship and then to release it and let it go in love and light. And then breathe through it and then to say, I am secure. I am. I am focused. I am committed to this greatness. I am committed to my strength. I am committed to my development. I am committed to honing my own skills. I'm committed towards honoring my own needs and being able to identify and fulfill those. And so it is. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.